Hi, this is Mike Carter with Carter Custom Knives once again. In my last couple of videos, I showed you uh, how we made the brass bolsters for this knife and also how we uh, fitted these beautiful mammoth ivory handles. I also showed you a little bit how I do some of my brass uh, or some of my vine file work on this. We're almost finished with this one. We've got a couple more things to do. I need to put my maker's mark on the Ricasso here. Uh, then we need to make a nice sheath for it. And finally I'll sharpen it and then give it a little final buffing. Um, I do wait until the last thing to sharpen these. I found that I lose a lot less blood when I'm making the sheaths if I work with it unsharpened. So um, in this third and final part of this particular knife, I'm going to uh, show you how we do those things. So uh, next thing we'll do is put my mark on it. Okay, we're going to be putting my maker's mark on this blade. I'll be using the uh, Personalizer Plus Acid Etcher. I've got my stencil. This one uh, happened to be made by uh, Marking Methods. Um, although sometimes I do make my own stencils for special projects. So it's a pretty simple process. I've got a little felt pad that goes over this carbon element of the, of the etcher. And we need to wet that down with a few drops of this special solution for stainless steel. Don't really want it dripping wet. Just nice and damp. I use masking tape to put my stencil where I want it on the blade. Make sure it's pretty straight. And I'll also put a little tape up here. You just want to make sure you don't have any area uncovered where you might accidentally etch where you don't want it because it would make a dark spot on the steel or the brass. Okay, this etcher is grounded to this metal plate here on the table, so the knife is grounded to that. And the positive lead is connected to this carbon filament that's got my uh, felt and uh, etching solution on it. The etcher has two positions. There's etch and mark. First we'll do etch, which will actually remove some metal and etch into the steel. Then we'll switch to mark, which actually puts some metal back on. Uh, it switches from AC to uh, from DC to AC current and actually puts the black into the mark to make it show up. So I'm on etch mode and it just takes a few seconds now I'll switch to mark And again, it just takes a few seconds, depending on how deeply you want to etch it. You really don't have to go that deep. And there you see my mark. After you etch it, you want to rinse it off with a solution, uh, it's basically just bake, baking soda, then it neutralizes any acid and stops any, any further progression of, of the acid 
effect on the steel. And there you can see a nice clean mark. Okay, now that we have our knife marked, next thing we need to do is uh, make a nice leather sheath for it. And in this case, I'm going to make one with a uh, snakeskin inlay. I think that uh, that's going to go real nice with that uh, bark mammoth ivory. So the first thing I need to do is make a template for cutting my leather out. And once again, I'm going to use my trusty manila file folders. I just love these things for all kinds of uses. They're cheap and uh, just work well for this. So first thing, I'm going to mark the blade for the front of my sheath, which is just going to come up to the bolsters. And then for the back, we have to go the whole length of the knife plus a little extra that will fold over and be the belt loop. So we'll trace it again. Only this time I'm going to trace the entire handle. So now I take a compass, and I've got this gap set at uh, a half an inch. I normally do three eighths to a half an inch. And what I'm doing here is I'm going to follow the shape of that blade, and I'm adding a half inch to it all the way around. That's going to give me room for my stitching and a little room to just trim it up, make everything nice and neat. So on the back side, remember, this is where our sheath is going to end. So we need to allow a little extra for our belt loop. So we got to have leather that's going to come on up here, fold over, and come back down. Adjust the length of this belt loop here after we get it cut out and see how it's going to fit on the knife. So now we just cut these little cardboard templates out. So this is what we're going to have. That'll be my sheath back. This will be my front. And this is going to fold over and be my belt loop. So that's basically going to be our sheath. Now we will, since we're doing an inlay, we will need to make two front pieces because we're going to have a backing piece 
our snake skin is going to be glued over that. And then another face plate that's going to have cutouts in it that lets the snake skin to show through. So we will need to make two fronts. Okay, I've got some nice leather here. It's not too thick. I think this will work fine for both front and back. So this is our front, and I've marked this will be the outside. So I need to make two of these. I use these little uh, pilot red ink pens for marking my leather. They work great for this uh, marking on this leather. This piece here is a little wrinkled, so I'm going to skip using that piece. And then we got our back. Remember we had the belt loop pulled over. This is going to be the inside. So you need to remember to flip that over so that you've got your uh, hair side of the leather on uh, sh toward the back of this sheath. So there's the pieces we need. And yes, I am a lefty. In a world of right-handed scissors. Okay, we've just about got it cut out here. So here's our front. And as I said, it's going to be overlaid onto this piece with some snake skin in between. So it's going to look something like that. I'm going to take this little beveling tool and uh, clean up these edges a little bit. And we're a little ragged on the inside edges, so I'm going to try and trim that up just a little bit. I'm going to burnish them a little bit. I just have a little uh, piece of uh, mammoth ivory here, but some smooth wood or plastic or anything will work with this. Basically, you're just rolling down that 
that leather, burnish those edges a little bit. And just kind of slicks those edges up a little. So what we need to do is glue our snake skin onto this piece and then glue this on top of that. Then we'll trim all our edges up real nice. Mark, uh, make a stitching groove and mark our stitching holes and uh, sew it all up. Before we do that, we'll need to put a welt in here. So let's mark where that will be. Well, that's basically where we need to put our welt. And I have some leather, just pre-cut strips that I use for welts. This is especially good if you have some leather. It just turns out to be not real pretty or something. Uh, it's always good to use them. Something like this, where it's not going to be seen. Now in this case we've got a gentle bend we have to make here and this leather will bend and make that easily. But if you do have to make a sharp bend on your welt, what you can do is make a couple of cuts, little V-shaped cuts in the leather and cut out a little V-shaped notch in it and that will let it Close up to where that notch was, and you make a sharper bend with it. But here we're pretty good shape, I think. Now, before I glue my welts onto my back piece, there's a couple of things I want to do here. First of all, I want to put my maker's mark stamp on this. So we need to uh, wet it down a little bit. And I have my custom made Carter stamp. So I'll position that about where I want it, make sure we're pretty straight. Give it a couple of wax with a hammer. And we get a nice mark. So I'm going to glue my first welt in here. You do need to put glue on both pieces. As you can see, I have not dyed anything on this leather yet. And that's one thing you want to be careful is not get any of this glue any place where you're going to be uh, putting dye. 
because the dye will not take where there's, there's glue. So I just have to let that sit for a couple minutes till it gets nice and tacky. And I can go ahead and get ready to uh, glue my snake skin to this piece. First bolster is ready to go. Line it up with my marks here. And we give that a couple of smacks with the mallet. looks pretty close. And the whole purpose of the welt is once this blade is sharpened and you put it down in a sheath, it's riding against the edges of these. Otherwise, it would be trying to cut your threads where you've got the sheath sewn together. That's drying. Our snake skin should be just about ready to go. second bolst or welt in. As you can see Leather's a little wider than the welt here, so we'll trim this down before we get ready to sew it. Our stitching is going to go right down the center of this welt. Now I'm going to dye two of these pieces before I go any further for a couple of reasons. I want to dye inside the belt loop before I glue it down and can't get to it. And I want to dye this piece so that I can get down inside these edges good. If I do it after it's assembled, I can't get it in there without smearing dye on my snake skin, and I don't really want that. Okay, I've decided I'm going to do a uh, antique medium brown, and I do like this gel antique stain from Tandy Leather. I do want kind of an old antique look for it since we're dealing with a knife with 10,000 year old handles on it. So I'm just going to take a damp sponge get inside this belt loop
I'm going to go a little light right here where I know there's going to be glue to glue this belt loop down. I'm also going to put a little bit down inside here just because you know, I, I, it bothers me to see a dark sheath and then when you, you're, you're looking to put the knife in there and you see it's all light colored inside. So I just like to darken that down a little bit. About as far as you'd be able to see down into the sheath. And we'll do the same thing here. Don't have to worry about the edges where it's going to be glued and sewn, but right down the center here, we'll just darken that down a little bit part way down the sheath. And then finally, we got this piece that I wanted to get down inside those edges good. So I'm just going to go ahead and do this whole front. Sometimes you need to take a Q-tip to get down into the tight places, but the sponge is, uh, seems to be getting everywhere pretty good. that antique look. I just dampened my sponge again and go over it lightly again. And I may do another coat on this after it dries and we see what we look what it looks like. But you can see I got uh, all those inside edges darkened down nicely. I don't have to worry about that now and getting it on my snake skin. It's going to be a nice contrast. And another thing I need to do is where I'm going to glue this belt flap down. I don't want it this thick right here. So I'm going to take a tool they call a skiver and thin that out. That's this tool right here. It's got a little curved razor blade on it. And I'm just going to cut that where it tapers down to a real fine feather edge. fold that down, that's going to lay real nice and flat there. And sometimes I sew these flap, these uh, belt loop flaps down. Sometimes I don't. I really don't think it's necessary. This glue does a really good job. I mean, it's it's you know it's the stuff they put the soles on your shoes with. So once it's stuck, it's stuck pretty good.
Now the next thing I'm going to do <clears throat> is I'm going to take this out to the belt sander and clean up these edges, get my shape nice and even. See, I've got a little, little hump right here. And if I was cutting my stitching groove, the tool follows this edge. So it would be a crooked line right there. So I need to uh, dress that up, get that all shaped up. Then I'll put it together with the back and dress that edge down to match this one. That's starting to look like what our sheath is going to be. And like I said, the knife's going to sit right here in this welt, just like that. Front's going to be like that. And I'm going to cut in the sides of the belt loop a little bit, just make that a little thinner, a little, a little more sleek. It's a lot of handles sticking up out of the sheath, but I didn't really want to put the bolsters down into the leather. I think it's going to work out real nice. pieces a little bit on the belt sander and got them a little more even. Uh, I can go ahead and cut my stitching groove and mark it for uh, where my stitching holes will be. And I'm using a stitching groover, an adjustable tool. This rides on the edge of the leather and this actually cuts the groove. Then I'm going to just take a stitching wheel and I'm going to run that right down that groove and this is going to mark where I want my holes for stitching and they'll be evenly spaced. Another thing I like to do is that leather can kind of tend to rebound sometime and those holes, it, it, but by the time I get around to uh, making the holes, these little indentations can be hard to see sometimes. So I just like to take my awl and go ahead and start a hole there just so I can see them later on. On thinner leather, <clears throat> I will just punch a hole through it or sometimes mount um, just a nail, a small brad in my drill press and punch them through that way. 
This is going to be pretty thick since we had to do three layers on the front piece. We got the backing, the snake skin, and the front piece. And then we got the welt and the back piece of leather. So it's going to be a fairly thick sheath. Uh, in this case, I'll probably take a small, like 1 16th inch drill bit and actually drill holes in it. Well, there we are. That's my starter holes where my stitching is going to be. And then when I stitch it, the thread's going to lay right down in that groove. And I think I'll also do a little tool work on this before I assemble it. So I'm going to moisten the leather down a little bit again. Soften it up a little bit. And I've got just enough room here to do a little border stamping. I think we'll look real nice with this. And I'm going to go with a little bigger one just to put a little pattern across the top here. And I really think it needs something right here in the middle. And I think this one's going to work nice. I'll show you one other thing I like to do on my sheets. It's kind of uh, tedious, but it's just one of those little finishing touches I think that kind of stands out. I'm going to block part of my logo here, my maker's mark on the leather, so that when I stain this sheath, part of it won't stain. It'll remain this light tan color. And I'm going to do that using uh, acrylic resoline. Um, I've seen this similar thing sold with names like Block Out and things like that. This goes on clear and it dries very quickly. Okay, I'm going to uh, go back out to the shop and uh, punch some holes through this with the drill press. And then I'm going to hit the edge on the belt sander one more time just to clean it up.